Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. My partner has learned something over the years. The process he has, which you call channeling, is also his sweet spot. Regardless of what is happening around him in his life, the issues, the frustrations, the problems which he has, some of the same that you do, they all disappear. When he sits in front of spirit in this way, this is available for all of you. It's not called channeling. It's not even called meditation. You can do it with your eyes wide open even when you drive. This is a 24-7 relationship with what we call the house in the fog. <laughs> we spoke yesterday about this elusive house in the fog that my partner found that you have found as well. It's so many of you listening to this have found. And it is a metaphor for the house which is yours with the many rooms. Not the house of a prophet or a belief system. Not the house that somebody told you was available for many and it's the same house. The reason it's in the fog is because you must discover it yourself with your intent. It does not show itself, dear ones. And this is by design. So that humanity, when it starts to move, will have done so on its own, by itself, with pure intent and discovery. Now, there are all manner of kinds of houses in the fog. One of them is integrity in all kinds of things without any spirituality, just a different way of thinking. But the one I want to continue talking about right now is that which we discussed yesterday. The house in the fog is you. The power of you, what's in the house, and what's different there. Let us back up. I told you yesterday that there was a time when my partner was pleased with everything he was. There was no reason to search for any more. And this suits much of human population and civilization. They're in the box we talked about this morning. Don't disturb them. They're working with it. It's happening. In my partner's case, he found the house in the fog, that is to say, the one that was hidden, because that which occurred to him pushed a button of curiosity. Is there more? Now, spirit cannot show you the house, but it can push the button of curiosity over and over and over. Sometimes it's through synchronicity you bring a friend to this meeting. They don't understand anything that's happening, but when they leave, they realize that perhaps there's a house in the fog someplace with their name on it. And it starts a process that they must then pursue. This is free choice. The metaphor is clear. You've got to want to go there. Most of you sitting here and even listening to my voice have done so. But now it gets good. <laughs> there are many rooms in this house and in an old energy you have opened the door and explored so many of them. We mentioned yesterday that so many of them were beliefs And the challenge was to see if they matched yours. Could you justify the idea that you'd lived before? That's one of the rooms. Is it possible there's something called an Akashic record which would have then recorded what you did before? That's another room. 
So far, all of the rooms are very 3D. That is to say, they represent things and beliefs. Is it possible that sound and color has vibration that would heal? It's facts, beliefs, processes, even physics. And it requires that you open the door, take a look, close it if you're not ready, and come back when you are, if ever. And here we sit with the house in the fog with many rooms. Now, we want to tell you something. You've now discovered a stairway. <laughs> and you start going up the stairway, and the name of the stairway is profound. It has many names, dear ones. It is the shift of the planet, the precession of the equinoxes, the prophecy of the eagle and the condor, the city on the hill, peace on earth. And the stairway beckons itself for you to discover new rooms in your own house. The second story literally is the next story to be told. And you walk up the stairs and you are presented now with more rooms. And they're not near as easy. They present now a puzzle that deals with your inner core, that which is you, not necessarily something you want to believe in or you're curious about, but something that you have to work with that will change you forever. And there they are. You can even see the names on the doors, and some of you won't want to open them. And others will be brave enough to say, I'll try now. Come back later when I understand it more. The first one is called purpose. Very difficult, very difficult. A concept. What is your purpose on the planet? Not 3D. I am talking about your soul on earth. Why so many lifetimes? Why at all? Why now? And some of you have it figured out and some of you don't. And many don't want to try. It's too complicated. You're afraid of too much responsibility. You 3D eyes it. You want to box it in there. You'll say, I know what my purpose is, is to help humanity and write this book and do this and this and this. You missed it completely. Purpose of spiritual soul why are you here and I will tell you that as that door starts to open and you really want to look at it you're going to present it be presented with some some curious things for that door inside contains puzzles you have to Take your three-dimensional mind and throw it away. And you're going to have to look at the concept of life at all. And if you ever found out the true reason, and you will, you'll smile. And that will lead you to the next house. You exist that you exist because you are part of the creative source and the plan that is beautiful. It has nothing to do with you. <laughs> Your purpose is God. Ask those who walked the land here thousands of years ago, what was their purpose? And they would say to be part of that which was everything, to balance what was. So much were they a part of it, they didn't even know how old they were. They weren't counting. It's time for you to stop counting. And stop figuring it out. Because when you see real purpose, you'll know you are part of a very, very large plan of benevolence, of galactic purpose and love. It is universal. It's not about you. 
because you are a piece of everything. Can you decentralize or will it always be about the you that you walk around in the body that you have? This is the second story, dear ones. This is those who wish to become quantum. The second room is called self-balance. This is not obvious. But dear ones, if you accomplish the first one and you have a far larger sense of why and who and purpose, you're going to start relaxing and realize that the things that take place and happen to you are fleeting. And that although you may mark them as significant, you may be frustrated by them, even fear. If you pass the first room, you'll also know that you will recover in whatever that means because you are forever and you are self-balancing. Inside you is the master healer, the master psychologist, the channeler. All of those things, because you are part of the plan of God, you are self-balancing. If you are in the depths of despair, in the closet, a victim of all things in your mind, it's only a matter of time. Well, that will go away. The wise human will know that, and when they're in the depths of despair, will find something to keep them busy. Because time will take care of it, and you'll know it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine, no matter how you feel, no matter how angry or frustrated you are, if you knew there was the light coming, and all you had to do was wait, you would act differently instead of scrambling for solutions and survival. It's a different way of thinking, isn't it? A whole different concept. Room number three. If you would get past the first two rooms, number three has a sign on it that says completeness. You are complete. How many of you keep waiting for what you're supposed to be doing? <laughs> Don't raise your hand. There is a feeling of linearity within you. The clock is always tipping, ticking, and you want to know what you're going to do when you grow up. And this is very common, especially with old souls, especially because you see at some level the power that you have and you're never complete. You're never complete. When you go to bed at night and you think about who you are and where you are and what's going on, can you honestly say, I am that I am. I am complete with myself. If nothing ever happens past here, it's beautiful. Thank you, God. And I will tell you that most light workers don't think that way. What about the incomplete project that's going to make the difference or where you're about to go or the next level or those kinds of things? It's a human bias of time and also of what we will call bias of hierarchy. You're always reaching to the next rung to be higher than you are today with the idea that a higher vibration is going to make you better and those around you better, not realizing you're complete. You're complete. Now, you may do many things in linearity, but you're complete. God sees you as complete. Why can't you? There's a difference here. Very difficult, very subtle to understand when you say there's things that I must accomplish and do. Oh, how human of you. Not when you're spiritually whole and complete. And that should give you a feeling of relaxation. No matter what I'm going through, you'll say I'm complete. I know the purpose is beyond this lifetime, even the next lifetime. I am eternal and I'm complete. 
I'll walk this planet and do what I must, but it's not going to bother me because I am complete. Can you have peace with yourself? This is also very difficult. Those who have passed the first doors and are complete have total peace with themselves. And you may be in a situation where you're not finished and you know you're not finished or you're frustrated because things around you are not moving. In fact, you feel like you're never settled. The biggest challenge, can you be at peace with yourself anyway? The new normal is this way. It pushes and pulls you with an old energy that tells you you are incomplete, you're not worthy, and you're never satisfied. You want to know what a balanced old soul looks like? They glow because they're satisfied and peaceful with who they are. And they may be in the midst of turmoil in 3D. Do you see how these rooms are more advanced than you thought? They're difficult even for my partner to deliver the message because he has linear concepts and he is discussing quantum ones. The final door is the hardest. It's difficult to even have a name on it. We're going to call it the new human. It's evolution. Are you ready for such a change that you won't even feel like a human being? A change that you cannot fathom and one that all planets of ascension have gone through. So remarkably difficult is it that some have had many psychological problems with it because it is so different that you feel you're losing your mind. And yet it is sustainable through the love of God and with the help of holding the hand of the Creator. Dear ones, when you start being in touch with your DNA at a higher percentage and you're moving toward what we will call the 44 percentile, your brain functions differently and starts to work with innate and even the heart energy. A new process begins with you. It affects everything you are. You see things that you've never seen before, awarenesses of things you were never aware of before. You hear differently. You perceive differently. And it's all you can do not to be strange. You keep it to yourself until you find that others are experiencing similar things. This is one of the most difficult shifts that's coming for humanity. The Pleiadians went through it. They know what it is. If I told you what they could do now at, at DNA working at over 80%, you would recognize it because this is what the masters who walked the planet were able to do. Think about this. Consciousness over physics. The ability to produce objects and things with your mind that are real. Where nature actually obeys the physics of your consciousness because it is higher than that. Did you hear that? That the consciousness that you have, which is mastery itself, nature obeys it. Are you ready for that? You say you are. No, you're not. Not yet. But it will begin slowly. And when it does, you're not going crazy, dear ones. You've just met yourself, the real self. 
Some of you will know what I'm talking about. Not too distant future. Now listen. All of you. Listen. Complete with yourself. Look in the mirror. I want you to imagine. You don't look like that. Don't let the gender fool you. You're going to look eternal. The next time around, the next time around, the next time around. There's a lot to do. And you'll keep coming back and doing it and living longer and wiser as you do. And the mirror can never reflect the second story. This channel is a puzzle to many. But it had to be given on this land. The energy is correct for it. It's why some of you came. And you'll want to hear it again. <laughs> like all of the others, this channel is given in love and benevolence to those who have passed the marker. We've seen this before, and it is exciting. <laughs> Be complete. Breathe. Relax. And know that all is well. And so it is.